continue the case for side of transition. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the House, um, like the rest of the panel today, I'm not going to dispute with you about the existence of God. I'm going to suggest that since 1.228 billion people on the planet are Catholic and hold to the doctrine of the Church to be sacred in their belief of God, I'm not there to argue with that. What I am going to argue about is the idea of an institution being there as a force for good. I'm not going to argue that the Catholic Church does not have the potential to be a force for good. People like Liam over here, who are managers of food banks, and have um, and, and believe in, a, in the Catholic Church and, and its doctrine, are proof that individual Catholics can do good things. So I'm not saying that people within the church cannot do good things. However, as it stands, this institution is not a force for good. It is corrupt and, the, and it is sick and its doctrines um, serve as a reminder or uh, reinforce constant inequality. But I'd like to engage in some rebuttal first of all. Um, so the, the proposition have a very warped view of history. It's true that within Western civilization, a lot of our architecture, philosophy, music, etc., etc., has come from the Catholic Church. However, it is not completely necessary that the Catholic Church had to be there for those things to develop. Within other cultures throughout the world, we still have architecture, music, and philosophy. Those things may have been driven by religion, but they do not necessarily require religion to exist. Secondly, with regards to science, the Catholic Church may have had things, or may have, been, um, ha may have used tools of learning to promote science, but it's also acted in ways that is like, like crush science. I need only like remind you of Galileo or Darwin, which the church is like acted to spread. Yes. So Galileo had Pope Leo as his patron, and he annoyed his funder. As any scientist will tell you, if you annoy your funder, your funder is corrupt. Yeah. So, he annoyed his funder, and then got like condemned to house arrest for the rest of his life, for believing that the, the Earth goes around the sun rather than so the other way around. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Galileo was not a red man. <laughs> so, I'm not going to move on to the role of women. Um, so, again, we've had the discussion of, yes, Women in, inside um, monasteries were allowed to um, study and become freer under medieval systems. However, we need, only imagine, we need only look at the current church today as it stands. Women still are not allowed to be priests. Um, this is based on tradition. It's based on the fact that um, Jesus himself chose men to be his followers. Um, and, but he spoke to women in different ways. So the church suggests that while women cannot be leaders, they can have other roles. But then and suggests that somehow men can like, have this closeness to God, and that's why they're able to meet the complications. Yet there's a problem here, in that the church also suggests that, like, uh, that women have had close relationships with God, in that they've not been anointed as saints. We need only look at the female doctor of the church, um, St. Teresa. You have patron saints of France, Joan of Arc. You have modern people, like um, Mother Teresa. And you have the veneration of the Virgin Mary herself, who is a woman. Um, it seems absolutely ridiculous that women just cannot be praised and based on based on old traditions. Things that the things that the Catholic Church could very easily change to update itself and become a force for good. However, it doesn't. It remains stuck in the past and it remains to and it remains subjugating women. And it, it keeps subjugating women. All older things like marriage vows um, again act in this way. Um, it's promotion of um, virginity and uh, um, it's arguments against premarital sex, which don't just affect women, but also affect men, in that they have, they build up a stereotype of what men and women should be, something they base their identity on, which like causes massive problems when people then like act outside of those norms because they feel dirty or sinful. Um, and on top of that, um, like, people then use this to do other abhorrent things. The, the Republican Party of the USA has like, used that to block Obama's Affordable Health Care Act, arguing that because of Catholic teaching, um, Catholic schools shouldn't have to provide sex education or provide free contraception, despite the fact of because it promotes uh, promiscuity. Yet despite this, when we see in the world, evidence suggests that when we give proper sex education classes and we give out contraception for free, that there are lower rates of teenage pregnancy and Teenagers actually 
engage in sex a lot later. Point as opposed to the USA, where there's higher rates of teenage pregnancy and people engage in sex at a lot lower ages. No, thank you. Um, but birth control doesn't just affect women, it also affects the developing world. Um, so, between when, when, when AIDS started to be discovered as like an actual problem in the 1980s, since then, then alone, there has been estimates of what 30 million people have died in, of AIDS in developing countries. The Catholic Church remains in a position where it says that contraception is bad. Um, I can quote uh, the Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI when he said about condoms, that condoms are not a real or moral reason um, to prevent AIDS. Real or moral reason. So when the UN AIDS Foundation says that, con that condoms and other forms of contraception are the most effective way at curtailing the effects of AIDS, I would suggest that's a very real solution to AIDS. And when it comes to saving the lives of 30 million people, I would suggest that's a pretty moral thing to do. Um, but moving on, I know I'm going to very quickly go on to about homosexuality. Um, yes, I'd like to thank Liam for the quote. Um, perhaps he'd not like to pass that quote on to his superiors and suggest to the church that maybe they should like, change their um, position on homosexuality because the church still maintains, because of quotes like that, that um, gay people cannot be active members of its community. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They may laugh, laugh, but this is true. It's like throughout, throughout the world, like even, even in West, Western civilizations, people are still very anti-gay because of their Catholic beliefs. This isn't just a solely Catholic thing. It can be like due to all sorts of religious beliefs. But the Catholic Church, with 1.2 billion people as its membership, has some sort of influence over people's lives, which it should use for good. Um, and finally, I'm going to come on to homosexuality, or sorry, not homosexuality, pedophilia within the church. Um, we, I'm, I'm not going to dwell on this too long, because we all know the effects that um, the church has had in terms of paedophilia. It has institutionally failed to deal with these crises. Um, over 5,000 allegations in the US alone, and yet there's only been 150 convictions. The Pope Emeritus Office was like, embroiled within scandal because it was trying to block uh, the defrocking of priests. Um, institutionally, this organisation is corrupt, it's not dealing with its problems, it needs to modernise, and until it does, it is not a force for good. Thank you.